Some sad news today. Noah Cloud died of a heart attack suddenly. He was a loving... Is loving the right word here? Loving husband-ish. Father, when he wanted to be. And mildly charming through and through. He is remembered by his son, with whom he had only recently reconnected, if you could call it that, and a daughter who never seemed to really notice his existence. But the feeling was mutual. Noah Cloud, 1928 to 1991. You have one new message and one saved message. New message. Hey, Denny, it's Margot again. We have to talk about this. You can't keep avoiding me. Oh, can't I? No, you can't. Please give me a call back. You need to process this, and you're not right now. Just call me, okay? Okay, bye. If you make a decision to quit something, the least you could do is stand by that decision. Whether it's a baseball team or a family, you left. Stay that way. And God, where do you come off telling me what I'm experiencing? I have been avoiding you, but honestly... Anyone who has to spend five minutes with you would feel the same regardless of family. Maybe that's mean, but I have no reason to believe that you're still not about as emotionally supportive as a grain of salt. Message deleted. Saved message. Hey, Denny! I stood you up last week and I wanted to make it up to you. Give me a call back when you get a chance. Message save. Hello. Hey, Dad. Dan, is that you? Oh, hey, yes. Denny boy, your pop, your pop is calling. Well, actually, you yes, called me. I did. Dad, look. Look at what? You can't really look through the phone. You, you need something different for that. Dad, can you be serious, please? Was I not? No. Dad, I just wanted to say. Yes. I. No, I, I owe will you shut you up for a minute. And sometimes why? I already have. Now you talk. Damn it! How are you here? Why are you always here? Just, just like Margot. Just stay gone. Get out of my head. Get out of my life. Hey Tara, I'm guessing you've already left. I'm running a little late. But if not, I should be there in like eight minutes. Uh, sorry about the delay. See you soon. I'll have this Caesar salad. And it's like, if you sold the car, great. If you wanted to give it to your younger brother, also great. It's not a big deal at all. Just uh, don't lie to me about it. It's so small, I know. It's but... like if you're this close to someone and your decision obviously affects them, then yeah, why lie? Right? What could he possibly gain by this? It's not like it's an all that sustainable lie. Did you have any plans for the money after you sold it? Yeah, kinda. No, but you know what I mean. There's a whole list of projects like getting the deck fixed, finishing the basement, buying a freaking pool, you know. That could have gone to any of those... I get it. And I know it's his car. He could do with it whatever he wants. It's just... <sighs> Don't lie to me about it, you know? I hear you. If you trust and respect this person, then you should never feel like you have to lie to them. Yes, thank you. The only thing that I could think of is that he was embarrassed or felt bad about it, maybe. And let's face it, you're not the biggest fan of his brother. He was probably worried that you'd maybe be disapproving, you know. And that's stupid, I know. And in no way rationalizes lying, but I certainly don't believe it was malicious in any way. I know. You're right. It's just... It's so constant with this small shit... It's not the first time this has happened. Remember when he lost his job almost a year ago? It took him a month to tell me. A month. Like, I get being embarrassed, but with me? This stuff happens. It just does. God, it's so frustrating. With that, I'm guessing he just didn't want to burden you with it. 
there is that ingrained traditionalistic idea that the man has to handle all this and carry the weight of the world. Do you know what I mean? No, that's not it. He's just dumb. Okay. Uh, in which case? He just doesn't get it. He can never put two and two together or get to the point where he actually realizes why I'm upset about this. In which case, there has to be at least a sign of growth. Any sign of it, really. There, ha there has to be a limit to how much BS you'll put up with without appreciation for your perspective. And that's only for you to determine. If that limit does not exist, then you accept the fact and move forward without change, but secure in the fact that it is what you chose. God, is there a third option? He's dumb. He's always been dumb, and you've always known that you could do better. That said, I love Sam. I think he is sweet and warm and loving, and you two together are just so awesome. If you express the importance of all this to him and why, there is not a doubt in my mind that he will hear you. He's dumb, but he's not stupid, if that makes sense. Yeah. It does. I mean, no, it doesn't, but I get it. Ugh. Why does being an adult have to be so difficult? Good fucking question. Hmm. Thank you for uh, listening to all of that. You're fine. We all got to vent sometimes. How are you doing? I'm fine. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I can't imagine what you're going through. It's fine. Really. He's been in the ground for like four months. It's not like we were a close family. Well, you know. Yeah, but still though. If you want to talk, you deal with everyone else's problems enough. You're allowed to have some of your own. We're here to listen to you as well, you know. Yes, I know. Thank you. It's like a difficult math problem. All the information's right there. Everything you need to solve it is in front of you, but I'm, I'm okay. There's nothing wrong with needing help, especially when it comes to math. Hell, math hasn't changed in a thousand years. I'm fine, really. Sorry. Well, if you You'll need... you the first one I call. Hey, Denny. Mom's birthday is coming up soon. I know we've never done anything for it before, but I was thinking maybe we could get together and have lunch or something. I don't know. Please call me back. I have nothing to say to you, Margo. I really don't. Thank you for abandoning me. Thank you for leaving me with Mom. I really appreciate the way you managed to not call for ten years, and now suddenly your fingers work. Thanks, Margo. Thanks a lot. Your sister. What a fire. Really, Dad? That's all you got? Of course, that's all you got. That's all you ever got. Yep. That's a woman for you. Oh, wait. That one, too. No wonder her mom drank herself to death. God, this is getting darker. Can there be something light, please? That's better. That's much better. Good news today. As all wars have simultaneously ended, equality for all people has been achieved, and global warming has come to a screeching halt. The president has just issued a statement that tigers are no longer an endangered species, and all production for Indiana Jones 4 has been cancelled. They call it news, but it's almost always, always recycled material. You'd know all about that one, Dad. God, work is impossible. Danny, something came in the mail for you today. I don't get mail. Well, today you do. That's weird. Well, are you gonna take it? Yes, just put it down right there. You know, some people would be very excited to get mail of any kind. I'm sorry she hasn't called you back. Don't take it out on me. Whatever. From Sheriff Stephen Burke, Corning, Ohio. I don't know any cops, let alone from Ohio. Yeah, that's strange. Why are you still here? Hello, Danny. I'm not sure if you remember me. I certainly hope you do. We met about five years ago in Cleveland. I believe you were working on a story you were covering. We met at a bar and then again at the same bar for a while thereafter. 
I'm sorry to hear about your father. Losing your parents is not an easy thing for anyone to go through, and yet we all have to. He's obviously never met my father. I'm writing to you because I need your help. This message is going to seem odd, and it is, but I can't go into much detail. There's a small town, Chillsburg, Ohio. It is where I am from and have built my life. It's experiencing a type of an anomaly. Something I can't exactly explain here, but can show you when the time comes. I'm not sure when this letter is going to reach you. You're a difficult man to track down. I found your name tied to a publication from Sutcliffe Media and took a shot in the dark. I do hope this reaches you. You showed me, a total stranger, a fantastic amount of compassion and understanding. And I don't believe it's in your nature to turn away from a person in need. And I need you. At the very least, this may be a good story to cover. I have included a photograph of us at the bar, just in case you need further proof of this encounter. Detailed instructions are attached as well. If this plea isn't enough to entice you, I hope your sheer curiosity will. I look forward to when we can see each other again. Sincerely, your friend, Sheriff Stephen Burke. What the hell am I supposed to do with this? I don't know this man. I haven't worked at Sutcliffe for months. It makes sense that they would have forwarded it, I guess. I have a face, at least, and I kind of remember him, I guess. Yes, I think he was friendly. The only nice man in Cleveland, but he wasn't a cop. That's a detail I know I'd remember. I know. Damn it, none of this sits right. The right thing is never easy, but it's always right. Oftentimes, it's all that's left. Maybe you should have actually listened to yourself on that one instead of believing yourself this, this all-knowing God. You don't really know shit. Hey, Tara, it's uh, Denny. I'm, I think I'm going out of town for a little bit. That's cool. Like a work thing? Uh, not exactly. Well, it's not a vacation. You don't know that. How do you know it's not a vacation? You don't do vacations. And usually when you drop off the face of the earth, there is more purpose behind it. Or are you going anyway? Chillsburg, Ohio. A vacation to the middle of Ohio. Maybe. You're a strange man, Denny. I'll explain more when I get back, I think. Uh, look, do you still have my spare key? Yes, I'll get your mail and I'll take care of everything. I don't get mail, but yes, if you don't mind. Consider it done. Thank you. Denny? Yeah. You're okay, right? Yeah, yes. I'm sorry. You're right. All this is weird, but I don't know. Maybe this is the distraction I need. I might be off the grid for a little bit, but yes, I'm good. Thank you so much. Of course. Whatever you need, Danny. So I'm driving to the middle of nowhere, Ohio, to meet someone I had a couple of drinks with years ago for unclear reasons. What the hell is my life right now? Once you hit Corning, take Highway 13 South until you reach a road on your right with a small arrow saying Chillsburg on it. Take that right. You hit Jenkins, you've gone too far. But half mile in, you'll cross a bridge. That's how you'll know you're going the right way. I keep getting this feeling I'm at the start of a horror film or something. There's going to be some vicious monster that I'm destined to fight to save the town. Now this part is very important. Make sure you arrive after July 8th. It's September, so that's not an issue. Make sure you arrive by 9.30 a.m. Go to 65 Hillside Drive. It'll be just off the main road after, you guessed it, a rather noticeable hill. You'll meet up with Trinity. She will put you up and instruct you from there. Well, 10 a.m. certainly ain't happening. Sorry, Steve. Where the hell am I?
This whole place feels like it's stuck in the 1970s or something. I don't see any people. Half expect to be greeted by a sheriff on horseback with a gold badge. And maybe I'm here to help him ambush the local gunslinger that's been stealing cattle. Could be interesting if Liberty Valance ever shows up. Hello. Hi, I'm Denny. Uh, Sheriff Burke sent me. He said I'd be staying with you for a few days. Yes, you're late. I know. I'm sorry. I had a little trouble finding the place. Chillsburg is not an easy place to find. <laughs> you're telling me. Sheriff's instructions were all far too vague as well. Cryptic, even. None without purpose, I assure you. I'll show you to your room. I would really like to see the sheriff as soon as possible. There will be plenty of time for that. Besides, you'll probably want to rest and shower, for that matter. Here is where you'll be staying. The bathroom is at the end of the hall, to the left. Thank you. Of course. There are towels and extra pillows in the closet. I'll have dinner ready in 15 minutes. Do clean yourself up. Noted. Thank you. What a mildly rude woman. Her house seems very stately, but modest, if that makes sense. Running water, yes. Electricity, questionable. Wait a minute, has she really been waiting for me since July? Christ, none of this makes any sense. The body of one Denny Cloud was found in an obscure little town. Uh, Wait a minute. Denny Cloud, local journalist, has been reported missing. He had last been heard of traveling to the middle of Ohio for a story. If you have any idea of his whereabouts, please contact... Yeah, that's more accurate. No one would ever find my body here. I don't even have any idea of where here is. Ask not what your teeth can do for you, but what you can do for your teeth. Toothbrush! Fuck! I knew I was forgetting something. Denny? Yes, Dad? This article you've written is almost very good. It's more fun to tease the candy cane than to feed it. I have no idea what you mean. Dad? Not now, Margot. I'm talking to my son. But... I want you to respect that. Fuck. Thank you for the meal. The sheriff is a friend. I'm doing him a favor. Well, I appreciate it all the same. He mentioned an anomaly or something strange happening. Well, if he did, I'm sure he would like to explain it all in depth. Of course. That's a nice photo. Is that your family? Yes. You have a very cute family. Thank you. That's my husband, Logan, and my son, Robert. Well, I look forward to meeting them. And you? What? Any family? I have a sister. We don't talk much. My mother passed on a while back, and my father a few months ago. I'm sorry to hear that. We weren't exactly close, any of us. That's too bad. I never really knew anything different. Logan took Robert to a baseball game. He plays in a league one town over. There aren't enough kids to form a league here. They usually carpool, but Logan was late today. I doubt we'll see them before tomorrow. How far away is the sheriff's office? Not far. A half-hour walk. I'll give you a ride in the morning. If you give me instructions, I can no. just drive myself. I think the sheriff is going to want to walk you back. Besides, our instructions are too vague and cryptic for your liking. Well, I did say that. Yes, you did. Thank you very much for dinner. Don't mention it. Do you know what I'm going to do today? Hmm. Go to school? No. You're not. Mom! Are you going to go to work and make billions of dollars? Almost. What are you going to do today? I'm going to... He's going to get to school on time today. No dilly-dallying. I know. So finish your breakfast so we can get going. I am done. So the next part? I'll grab my bag. I'll meet you at the car. How are you doing? You seem stressed. Just a dream I've been having. I shouldn't be too late today. 
I love you so much, Logan. I love you too. Rather adorable. I, I didn't want to interrupt. I'm glad you didn't. I didn't hear them come home last Breakfast. night. Breakfast? Thank you for the ride. Yep. It's a very nice truck. The sheriff will be inside. Right. Hello? Sheriff Burke? Yes, he will be waiting for me, she says. Hello, Denny. Long time no see. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm a bit under the weather, so forgive me for not shaking your hands. Do you have much trouble finding the town? Uh, yes, actually. Your instructions only got me so far. I imagine so. Well, here you are. I'm glad you could make it. Please make yourself comfortable. You mentioned something about an anomaly. Let's get right down to business. There is something strange going on here that is, well, rather difficult to explain, but something I will have to show you and with limited time to do so. My condolences for your father. I know you had a sordid relationship, but I imagine that must not have been easy for you. Uh, thank you, I guess. Feel free to make yourself some coffee in the other room. We have a long day ahead of us, and you'll want your energy. Uh, take a minute, and I'll meet you out front in about ten minutes. Sound good? Sure. I I guess. I, splendid, I would really splendid. like... Splendid. So take your time. I'll meet you around. I can't tell if this is a horror film or an episode of Twin Peaks, but what the hell? Sheriff seems much more squirrely and anxious than I remember him so frail and weak keeps hugging the wall like he's going to collapse at any minute i feel like there should be an ambulance on standby or something wait where is the nearest hospital is there even one in this town god how do people live like this i mean i i, I barely remember him but i feel like i would remember the refraining from eye contact the scattered brain demeanor kind of pity him honestly did I really talk to him about my father that much? I don't open up to everyone. Always best to have an open mind. Shut the fuck up, Dad. You're the most narrow-minded, short-sighted fuck I know, so don't give me shit, you hypocrite. God, this percolator is a mess. I can't thank you enough for coming all the way down here. Practically on a whim, dropping everything. I would do my best not to waste your time. We're going to take a quick tour of the town so I can show you what's going on. This way, stick close to me. I've got to be honest, I, I barely remember you. It's a little disturbing how much you remember of me at all, let alone the specific details about me and my father. And the photograph, and you're a cop, it, it, it's a lot. Sheriff. Are you okay? Danny, I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't remember me at all. You had a profound impact on me, and I imagine most of the people you meet. It's who you are, and I'm very grateful for that. If something you said uh, to find yourself through your actions, not through the perception of others. Letting indecision dictate them only leads to insecure actions, or something like that. <laughs> You're much better with words than I am. You helped. All I'm asking is please, bear with me a little while longer. All will be explained. Here we are. This is Dora Barrington. And just wait about 15 seconds. What happens in 15 seconds? Good morning, Sheriff. How are you today? Morning, Dora. How was the fundraiser yesterday? Oh, it went really well. We raised almost $300 for the church. Tommy Hunt was home from college and was that able to make, make a any valuable sense. donation and didn't ask for anything. Just See, happy to do it, this town is full of ghosts. See, Dora Barrington died almost a year ago. Said, on her last day on earth, she was watering her garden when the sheriff walked by and she struck up a conversation with him. Ghosts that are burdened with living the last day of their lives over and over and over again. From what I've been able to determine, they're not aware of this. They aren't exactly sentient, more like a video clip on repeat. Dora died of a stroke that night. 
And inexplicably, here she is. She can't hold anything that she didn't that day. This is why I called you here. There's something more I'm going to need from you. Thanks for stopping by. Have a lovely day, Sheriff. Thank you for listening. Please come back tomorrow for the next chapter. What the hell? Don't bother taking pictures. That sort of thing doesn't work. Ghosts. Literal ghosts. I imagine you'll need a minute. You thought it was a good idea to bring me here to show me this. I barely know you. What is wrong with you? Shit. This is a startling discovery, I know. Startling is hardly an adequate word for it. I'll give you some time. Meet me in that house over there in 20 minutes. I'm sorry to be so insensitive, but time is of the essence, and we're short on it. Ghosts. God damn it. Why should I even be surprised? It's just as fucked up as anything else in my life. Uh, congratulations, Dad. Uh, I've met someone as twisted as you. His name is Sheriff Stephen Burke. It figures it would be a cop, wouldn't it? <laughs> Fuck. Denny. Oh, shut up. Your mother has some issues. Good she God. can get hysterical at times. Don't pay it any mind. It's just a way women get. Don't think she doesn't love you any less, or me for that matter. She just lashes out and there is nothing really behind it. Sometimes she just needs some time to relax, take her medicine, chill out. You'll figure that sort of thing out when you're older, when you're the man of your own house someday. Christ. There's only one home, home is a feeling, not a place. I, I know me, I, I am me. All I am is Wade. I, I, how can I live with this? They will, this is Walter Forrest. They will see he lived I in this town his whole life. He's estranged from his brother who left town I, some time I before this. Let's in about ten let minutes, he's going to shoot himself in the temple at the age of 33. I'm here. Let me be here. I'm telling you so you can feel free to make yourself me. scarce before then. Knowing his last moments would be immortalized, his suicide note is spoken here. Good God. I live a town of ghosts, hollow husks without a host. How can I stay? How can I go? This world is twisted, shattered, forever seeking respite, forever wanting to be rid of this burden, of this curse. The only home I know the pain is too much to bear, the misery, the hurt, despair. Oh, brother, where art thou? Oh, father, please come home. Take me away from this prison, this sick, sadistic tomb. I've taken all that I can. I'm broken, beaten, battered. I live a town of ghosts, of which I can say I am now one. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Denny. I'm sorry I had to show you this. Are you? Did, did, did you? Walter was a very troubled young man, but damn if that kid didn't have heart. I'm showing you this because his life and death was not for naught. He wanted to leave his testimonial, his exhibition. He wanted an audience, a compassionate one. And I knew I'd found one in you. Please be patient, I implore you. I'll leave you to cope. Take your time. Explore the others in this town, if you like. Mrs. Malty lived in the big red house down the street. What's the saying? The unexamined life is not worth living. I think it's Plato. Anyway, I'll give you some time. On the other side of the hill you pass when you drove in, you'll find an old well. I'll meet you there at 4 p.m. sharp. There I will provide more explanation, but for now, process. If you head back to my office, you'll find a generous lunch has been prepared for you. Thank you for indulging me, Denny. And you're just going to walk away from all this. Wow, that's rich. 
And it was Socrates, by the way. Fuck. I am in over my head. Why did I come here? I should have just taken off. This is way above my pay grade. This is absolutely fucked up. Is anything real? It makes sense that your sister took off. She could never follow through on things and certainly didn't know how to take a joke. Not like you, Denny. You're a funny one. She's far too serious and stern. She gets that from your mother. What a pair, huh? Why is that the only mention of her since she took off? Even when we met for coffee, you couldn't bring yourself to mention her. It was the elephant we never addressed. How could you just erase someone like that? Your own child, your own daughter, a father is supposed to be so much more than that. How could you, Dad? Local columnist Denny Cloud has checked himself into a mental institution after experiencing what can only be described as a nightmare of science fiction proportions. He has been referred to by doctors as a hollow husk without a host. Odds are he will never be the same again. And in entertainment news... The... Hello, Denny. This is the last stop on our little tour. I'm sorry this has been such a depressing episode, and I'm sorry it doesn't get much better. I've had time to cope with the realities of the situation. I can't imagine what it must be like to have it all thrust on you in one day. Please indulge me for a little while longer. I've tolerated this much. As you likely may have guessed, I am one of the ghosts in this town as well. At the bottom of this well, you'll see where I have thrown myself. Beside it, you will find a script depicting most of today's events, including times of death for many of the folks in this town. With the eye, as you see me, am dying. Many of those who have chosen to stay have passed on, and those who have left made a point of putting this place in their rearview mirror, with good reason. The weight of this town is too much for anyone to handle. You're probably thinking, why you? Why are you the unlucky soul roped into our mess? It's because you bought me a drink all those years ago in Cleveland. There is one soul left that has a need of saving in this town, and you've already met her. I am asking too much of you. That has been clear from day one. I needed someone from the outside who wouldn't see this place as a spectacle, but as a painful tomb it is. Someone, no stranger to grief, mind you, I would understand the gravity here. She is way down, anchored to this town for the most painful reason of all. I have done all I can for her. I need you to convince her to leave this wretched place, destroy the bridge leading in, and take down the sign so all of us may rest in peace. Ideally, this town would be raised to the ground, but that's too much to ask of anyone. A nameless dirt road and a burnt bridge should deter any visitors. We never got many to begin with. I'm sorry. This burden is so great, so massive, I can't begin to think of what you must be feeling. Don't blame yourself for how any part of this story ends. You are a visitor here, a witness at best. If I had a better way, I would have found it, but alas, this is it. Thank you, Denny. I would walk away so you don't have to see what happens next. Okay, Sheriff. Okay. I hear you. Mom, can you look over my paper? Why don't you ask your father? But I'm asking you. What do you think? I think you should ask your father. He knows best. But I want your opinion on it. Thank you, Denny. You know I'm no good at this stuff. Your father might be more helpful. If you say so. Oh, I love you, Denny. I love you too, Mom. Mom. Yes? Do you love Dad? Mm-hmm. With all my heart. Why? Because he's your father. We all have our roles to play, and mine is by his side. He's Noah Cloud with his head in the clouds, and I'll love him till the day he dies. But what if you didn't? That doesn't matter, because I do. He's 
not perfect, and neither am I, but we have chosen to share our lives with each other, and that's all that matters. But... Love is a... difficult beast. No one can say they understand it entirely. As long as I've been around, I knew I wanted to find someone like your father. He is my stable ground. But are you happy? I'm in love. I'm reminded of the time I actually met Sheriff Burke in the flesh in Cleveland. I owe it to him to remember. To make that effort to remember. Why the hell did he do such a stupid thing? All of this for me? A stranger. A memory. He doesn't know who I am, who I grew into. Why don't you take a seat? You're making people uncomfortable. Drawing attention to the fact makes everyone uncomfortable. Everyone who can hear you anyway. Do you always accost strangers at a bar? Only ones I'm interested in talking to. What made me so unlucky? A good question. Let me buy you a drink. Sure. Come on, a free drink for making you sit next to me. Because I have nothing better to do. There it is. This may be what I need. Tequila soda, please. Okay, sure. What brings you in here today? All right, fine. I'm in town covering a story. I have to conduct an interview in the morning. What kind of story? It's not important. I'm hardly interested in it anyway. Understood. What brings you in here? Also in town for work. What do you do? I help people. Doing what, though? Anything I can. That's not a lot to go on. Where does your sadness come Excuse from? Excuse me? I'm sorry. You wear it like a mask. Expect me not to notice. I don't know. Impossible to say. My mother died recently. My condolences. Thank That's you. never easy. I wear the mask to hide the sadness. What? And nothing. I'm sorry. I'm being too much. No. What do you mean by that? guess I'm curious. You live your life with these straightforward ideas, right? How things are, what things are supposed to be. Reality flips it all on its head, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I get that a lot. My job and its nature is good. I have to believe it's good. It's seeing the way it's viewed, seeing the way the position is abused and mutilated. God, it hurts. This is what I wanted to do my whole life, and people, with good reason, spit at me as I walk by because of my position. What are you, a politician? <laughs> no, I'm not that bad. I just have trouble uh, reconciling the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, it's not your position that defines you. It's you that defines you to hell with what people think. It's your actual actions that determine character. This is good. Go on. If, if you want to stand for good, you know, then stand proudly for it. Letting indecision dictate them only leads to insecure actions. Define what is good and right to you and live for that. If it means leaving your job or redefining it, so be it. Abandoning your dream is not that easy. Is your dream your job or is it to help people? If it's the job, stay the course. If it's to help people, stand by your own moral code and let that be your guide. Nothing else. Damn it, son. You're right. Where'd you get that? Minutes feel like years to me. Guess I'm just an old man at heart. Well, aren't you a chipper one? Were you and your mother close? As close as we could be. That's all you can ask for, really. Is it? I always felt disconnected like... Death. Never mind. Go on, I'm just a salad. If she couldn't ever be herself, like truly be herself, could we have ever been that close? I have these snapshots, this very clear memory of who I saw her, her as, and I don't know who that is. I, I, I keep analyzing, 
these memories live like ghosts in your mind and you you try desperately to fill in the gaps to paint a more full picture but there's no way to do it and you'll drive yourself mad trying to and your father not as far as i'd want us to be i see is he he's still kicking no life is too short for grudges it's always worse to leave anything unsaid look i know you're not wrong but that's a hard truth to accept at this time. Okay. What's your name? Denny. Steven. Nice to meet you. Likewise. I guess we met up a few times after that. In hindsight, I really should have known he was a cop. I guess I was just too self-absorbed to realize it. Rest in peace, Steven. thought it was strange you having two cars for such a small town. The truck belonged to Stephen. Of course. Are you going to try to convince me to leave? At this point, I couldn't convince anyone of anything. The thought of going back to the real world, but the outside world, you know what I mean? The thought of going back to my life after this is insane. How can... You just live every day after experiencing this shit like nothing ever happened. Let me make you some tea. Sure, that would be nice. When did you realize that the sheriff had passed on? Something was odd when I first saw him. I wrote it off as he was a squirrely kind of guy. It was meeting Walter that really confirmed it. Walter. Did you know him? It's a small town. Everybody knew everyone here. I'm sorry. Walter was a friend of mine. Stephen tried so hard to break him out of his funk, to get him out of this town, but there was only one way for this to go for Walter. He knew it. Deep down, I knew it too. That must have been hard for you. Harder for him. By the end, all he could speak in was that depressing poetry you heard there. He was constantly suffering. He doesn't need to anymore. And we don't need to feel his pain anymore. Why did Stephen have to die before I got here? Why couldn't I talk to him as a person and not a ghost? He insisted on it. He was declining in health and was afraid you wouldn't make it in time. This way, he could preserve something. And he was worried that he would offend you in some way and scare you off. He had an admiration for you that I didn't... don't understand. He joked that he does better on film than on stage. This way he was able to stick to the script. Damn fool. A fool. And a friend. Why do you stay? How could I leave? Where would I go? What is my life if not here? You said it yourself. You couldn't imagine going back to the real world from here. What's waiting for me? A sad, depressing fodder like you? That's not a life. I make the most of the hand that I'm given, and I'm proud of the decisions I've made to end up here. You don't have to be mean. I'm not a ghost here. You're right. This morning, you mentioned a dream. I had a pit in my stomach the morning it happened. I didn't know what. I didn't know why. That whole morning felt like it was in slow motion. I dream about telling him to stay home. All the time we had together was just the tip of the iceberg. Did you help the sheriff with the script? Yes. It seemed too specifically woven for Stephen to have done by himself. He loved this town. So much he spent every last bit of his energy to save everyone he could from this type of life. Me especially. You love this town. So much so.
You don't have to stay for it to still be a part of you. Resorting to cliches now? I'm just saying there is nothing more you can give to it. You've given so much love. You've broken off so much of yourself in service to it. You don't owe anything more. You're right. There's not enough to take anywhere else. Maybe I want to stay here. Bullshit. Excuse me? I'm sorry, but that's bullshit. You have so much love to give. Your commitment to this town proves that. Do you think anyone here would want to see you waste away like this? Yes, my life arguably sucks. I'm constantly in between therapists trying to fix a hole that I've also spent a lifetime digging. But you know what? It's still my life. It's still the life I chose, and I wouldn't trade that for anything. It's who I am, and no amount of external influence will ever shake me from that truth. I would never compromise my own individuality for anyone, even the ones I love. Do you think Logan would want that for you? Don't! Or even Robbie, for that matter? You don't know what it's like! I wake up every morning and see him lying beside me. He smiles at me and... And time stops. In that moment, he's right there. He's always right there. When he hugs me before he leaves, I swear I can feel him in my arms and Robbie. And then he says he loves me. Living through that one day with him is better than a thousand without him. How the hell could I walk away from that? It's because of him that you've got to keep going. I'm not a supernatural expert, but, but maybe it's your attachment to him that keeps him here. All of them here. If you surround yourself with only ghosts and memories, you'll always be alone. Out there, you never have to be. If my attachment keeps him here, to die here, I'd never have to let him go. Don't talk like that. Trinity, think about who you are. What? Your parents, your childhood, your dreams. You don't understand. Not in relation to them. My world was shattered. When I met Logan, my world was broken, beautifully shattered. I don't want to start all over again. Yes, I remember my parents, who I was then, but that changes nothing. This is who I am now. They are as much a part of me now. Even if they're suffering and you're keeping them alive, let them live in memory, not pain. Oh, what do you care? This is all a story to you. This is not my story to write. I couldn't do it justice. I couldn't do Walter justice. He has a voice I couldn't understand. You're not going to leave without me, are you? Could you live with yourself if you did? I really hope you could. If you are truly immobile and decided on staying, there's nothing I can say to convince you. These people deserve to be remembered, not tortured, and I certainly never knew them enough to carry on their legacy. But if there is even an ounce of you that can see purpose in life beyond this, it, it, it's worth pursuing otherwise. This town is always here. We don't know that. And that's all she wrote without a note. You don't get it, Dad. You don't, and you never will. I keep trying to think of what it is I want to say to you, what, what I have to say to you, but the truth is, I have nothing. You know how I feel. You know how I felt my whole life. You're the one who needs to say something. I'm sorry, maybe? I'm sorry for putting you through hell, for driving our mother to drink herself to death. And then, oh my God, you have the gall to look me up and invite me out for coffee. And for some reason, I say yes. I don't know why I expected you to have grown or been better or maybe would even acknowledge the last chapter of our lives. No, just your typical small talk and platitudes. You are not a man of substance. I was so hopeful you'd be different. I was so hopeful that you'd change, that maybe we could have an actual conversation about something. Now, let me just have a heart attack and check out. 
All you are is a whole that we have to carry with us for the rest of our lives. A parent is supposed to be better than that, better than nothing at the very least. And I'm not going to let this whole become me. That's giving you way too much credit. Just the coffee is good. Thank you so much for meeting me, Denny. No. Margo, thank I'm you. I'm so sorry. Stop. No, I left. I abandoned you, and... Stop. You didn't abandon me. You abandoned Mom. I'd spent so much time, so many years, resenting you and hating you for it, and that was not fair. That was never your responsibility. Dad is in the ground, and that is for the best. Don't say that. It's true. I'd never seen him get violent with her, but I was always suspicious. He had a facade to maintain with me, but that was an effort that he would never have made with you. I'm so sorry, Margo. You never deserved any of this. And despite it, despite them, despite all of us, you have done so well. Thank you. If I was the older sister, I would have taken off just like you. I'm sorry it took me so long to see that. I'm sorry, too. You don't have to hate him, you know? I know. I don't even know if I do. I have had an insane time with this. It's like I hear him in my head, and I'm just filled with this energy, this hate and regret, and so much guilt. Where does the guilt come from? Not knowing more. Not being better. I feel that too. God, there is so much I want to say, and with mom especially, dad was just like the last thing connecting us to her, and he's just gone, and he took her with him. I miss her every day. Me too. So much. It's always worse to leave anything unsaid. Let's never make that mistake again. I love you, Denny. I love you, too. Hello? Hey. Denny! It's so good to hear from you. I'm, um... I'm ready to talk now. Where can we meet? 